When it comes to chest exercises, there are no shortage of options. However, which exercises do you focus on? If you're struggling to build your chest right now, you're gonna to wanna to watch to the end of this video because I'm going to give you the two exercises that you need to focus on if you wanna start seeing your best results. Now, others may want you to believe that there are only two exercises that you need and that all other chest exercises just don't provide any additional benefit. That's not what I'm saying. But if you don't have these two boxes checked in combination with each other, you're gonna to struggle to build your best chest possible. With this bare minimum approach, you can be assured of the fact that you're gonna have an effective combination of exercises to use and more so be able to focus on fewer things so you can get to where you wanna be faster. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, athletenext.com. Look, you might be surprised when you hear me say only two, because when it comes to chest training options, you know we've got quite a few of them. And what further complicates this is that anatomically, we know the chest is a three-headed muscle. We have the upper or clavicular head, the sternal or middle head, and of course, the lower or abdominal head. That might actually force you to make a couple personal choices. But the first thing you're not gonna have to choose is whether or not to do a bench press, but rather what version of a bench press. And if it's strength or overload that you're seeking, then of course the barbell variation gives you the best ability to do that. But if the fixed hand placement on the bar presents some orthopedic issues to you in either your wrist, your elbow, or your shoulder, well, you gotta have another alternative. And that's where we gotta head to the dumbbell rack. And in truth, I actually prefer the dumbbells for more than just those orthopedic reasons. But yeah, I mean, obviously, if I have one dumbbell in each hand, I can slightly tweak the position here into a point where it's very comfortable, even though I have a torn rotator cuff in my right shoulder. On top of that, we know that with the dumbbells, we're gonna expose any of that left and right sided weakness. I can hide that more easily in a barbell, and that could just further exacerbate a problem when there's one already there. But there's one other thing we can do here. Again, the independent movement in the hands allows me to do this, and that is to point the inside portion of my hands or my thumbs up as I come up. What does that do? It gives me more adduction of the dumbbells as I get to the top. For those of you out there that are struggling to build your chest, adduction is your best friend. And if you don't know it, you need to start learning. So if I can get my dumbbells to be pointing a little bit up on the inside, as I get to the top, my biceps will be able to come closer together and I'll get a better chest contraction. That being said, I do have another choice here. And that is you have to pick the angle of your bench regardless of which version you use. Because we talked about the anatomy of the chest. If your lower chest looks saggy and underdeveloped, then you're gonna wanna take this down to a decline bench because here we're gonna target more of that lower chest line. Of course, if we have a shelfless upper chest, then you're gonna to wanna to increase this angle to about 30 degrees. Now don't make the mistake of continuing to go higher and higher and higher because all you do is start shifting the focus away from the upper chest and more towards the front delts, probably contributing to more of an imbalance that's already there. If you got decent development of both your upper and lower chest and just wanna seek out some more overall size, then of course the flat bench setting is gonna be the best for you. Regardless of what choice you make here, you don't really have a choice of including a press in your first of two chest exercises. Now it's important to note guys that any pursuit of new muscle mass has to be supported by proper nutrition. If you're looking for a high quality protein, RX Pro 30G Premium Protein provides 30 grams per serving that's an industry leading amount with 28 servings per bag, making it an efficient, cost effective way for you to get yours. Now back to the video. Speaking of exercise number two and building off of the adduction we talked about in the last exercise, we have to train adduction directly and we do it best with a crossover. Now, if you don't have access to this machine, hold tight because I have another option for you. But we have to train adduction. This is not an optional exercise if you want your biggest chest because we look at the chest orientation and the fibers, they run literally east to west. They're designed and built for this purpose. And we don't have all exercise options that you might think. I don't like the unsupported dumbbell fly. It actually creates a lot of instability at the shoulder and just isn't even the best choice. Yeah! When you take an option like the crossover, you not only have the ability to get good hand over hand cross midline adduction, but we have the flexibility of doing it either straight out in front of us to work again, more of that sternal middle portion of the chest or from a high to low angle, almost mimicking a dip to hit more of that lower chest line or hitting the upper chest by going from that low and away to up and in angle. Again, there's a lot of flexibility here. Speaking of flexibility, you could do this at home with a band. And what's nice about it is it frees you up from having to buy this machine or even a lot of space because you don't need to do two arms at a time. The trade-off might be a little bit of extra time so you can work one side at a time, but again, you're getting the adduction that you're missing right now, which is going to provide you the opportunity for the biggest chest possible. Regardless of which version you use, be sure to do this when you do the exercise, and that is drive your shoulders and head back as you bring your arm forward. 
What this does is it places that chest prominently out in front, ensuring that the delts are doing a minimal amount of work and the chest is doing most of the work. Far too often people chase their hand out in front of their body or they don't even get their hand across midline. Those are two big mistakes. If you can get the arm across and keep your body moving back at the same time, you're gonna hammer the pecs the way that they should be. And again, it serves as the perfect complement to your press, hopefully leading to more compliments on your pecs. So if you have a particularly fucked up chest and more than one area looks pretty bad, how would you put this into practice? Well, just pick two exercise variations or angles. In other words, if you did an incline press, you do the high to low on the crossover. The next time around, do a decline press and a low to high on the crossover. If you're looking for more exercises and only two series, you can find the triceps and shoulders here. If you're looking for full programs, guys, you can find them over at athens.com. If you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss one of these videos or any other that we put on the channel. All right, guys, see you soon.